Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Gatekeeper of the Sheep with your truly this apostle Andre. Glad to be back with you. Let everyone know that I am on. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. So excited about what God is going to do today. Amen. This day has already been planned out. You know, it said this is the day that the Lord has made. You know, this day has already been created. It's just it's just being manifested. Amen. This is just a manifestation of something that God of this day, these 24 hours has already been ordained in heaven. And God has blessed us to be able to walk them out. Isn't that something? We have been able to walk this day out. Amen. And God already knew. God already, God already knew that you and I will be a part of this day. Bless you. Bless you. What's up, Joshua? God already knew that we was going to be a part of this day. So no, I don't care what you're going through right now. I want you to rejoice because you're breathing, you're listening, you're even hearing my voice. Somebody had plans this morning and it, it did not come to pass. There's families grieving because of the loss of a loved one. There's people laying up in a hospital that are in an induced coma. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Huh. We are so blessed with the things that we have. So we have to learn to stop complaining and stop thinking and start praising God. In the midst of whatever you're going through, if you're going through a bad situation right now, I don't even know why I'm going here. Uh, if you're going through a bad situation right now, I need you to give God a sacrifice of praise. Bless you, Sharon. Bless you. I need you to must. I need. Oh, I don't feel like praising God. You don't know what I'm going through. I don't. I, you know, can I be frank? I don't care what you're going through. Sacrifice that flesh. And give God a praise of thanksgiving. Give him, magnify him. Hallelujah. Thank there you go. Yeah. Sharon is one of my daughters in the ministry. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, 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 yes. We magnify God. We give that's that that sacrifice of praise. We're talking about the fruit, the fruit of your lips is 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 praise and thanksgiving unto God. And that according to scripture, according to Hebrews 11 and 15, that is supposed to be continuous. That's supposed to be continuous, whether you feel like it. That's, that's why it's a sacrifice, because you don't feel like it. It's a sacrifice because right now your pride is in the way. You're in your feelings right now. Well, I don't feel like praising God. Father, I don't even feel like reading my word. I don't even feel like praying. Nope, then you need to go. You need to bust into a praise. There was an old song called Bust the Move. <laughs> you need to bust a move of praise right now before the Father. You need to bust the move. Yes, you need to give my hand clap of praise. Glory be to God. We need to exalt the Lord thy God. Mm. The Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow, Matthew chapter 6. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own troubles, but for this day. See, I don't worry about the end of waiting to see if God is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. No, how about today? Am I faithful today? Have I been faithful from the time the Lord woke me up this morning until 12.04 is my my laptop says 12.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have I been a good and faithful servant to my God? That's my concern right there because who's to say at 2 o'clock, God might not say, son, it's time to come home. Mm. Y'all not hear me. We take these days so lightly. We take these days so lightly. We should be waking up. Father, I thank you. I got another opportunity to serve your kingdom. What you want me to do? What's my assignment? I know I got to go to work. Is there an assignment at my job? Is there someone I need to minister to? Is there someone that I need to, I need to shine my light? Matter of fact, let me, let me ask you this. Is your light, at, is your light, is the light of God? Oh, <laughs> watch this. Watch this. I want you to tell me the wattage of your light of God. Okay. This is all has to do with wattage. You know, when you buy a light bulb, you just can't buy a hundred, you just can't buy a hundred watt light when the fixture says the max is 60 watts. Okay. So is, is, is the light of God that's inside of you? Is it, let's do this. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. I don't even know if this is 25 watts. I know there's a 15 watt that I know. 
I know there's a 40 watt. I know there's a 60 watt. I know there is a 75. And I know there's a 100 watt. That means it's perfect. But where are you at as far as the light of God coming through you? 15 watt, 15 watts those days you don't feel like doing nothing. 15 watt is those struggle days with your relationship with God. Your light's so low, you you are oh I shade on the ball. Your light is so low at 15 watts that you you almost you pretty much blending in with darkness. Are you a 40 watt? Light bulb, you 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 almost 50% of light of God. But there's some things that's that's causing you not to not to produce a greater light. What are those things? What are those hiccups in your life that's causing you to fall short of displaying the fullness of God within you with everything that you possibly can? I would never say that I'm a hundred watt light bulb. Now I would say I would say I would say when the anointing is on us and God is using us, I would say that's a hundred watt. Oh my God, you're so real. <laughs> I would say that. I say those of us that are constantly in our word and constantly praying and things like that, I would say we're probably about a 60, 75 watt and that anointing adds to our natural to get the supernatural that brings us to a 100 watt light bulb. Hallelujah. Talking about light bulbs today. <laughs> I, I want I want to go back. I want to go back to yesterday. Because I didn't finish. So this is who is your spirit? Who is your father? Who is your spiritual father? Part two. Preferably, this will be the conclusion. And so I'm just going to piggyback a little bit. And then I, I found some, I found some, I found a, a real good nugget. A real good nugget I want to share with you guys. Real, 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 real good nugget I want to share. I want to share with you. Okay. So we said yesterday, and um, I, and yesterday I want I want to apologize too because I tried to multitask because I I can't remember doing I I remember uploading videos to, to Instagram but I never believe I actually went live on Instagram so I tried to do the Instagram live and do the podcast live. And to me, the podcast is more important to me. And so I was answering questions on both sides. And that's not that's not fair. So what I did was I did a pre a pre-recording. No, I didn't know. Let me say this. I went live before coming on here to let people know to come here. How about that? That's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did. So Pastor Tandy, that's the wife, y'all. That's the wife. Glory be to God. Uh, also, uh, I want to put this in. I want to put this in. You know what? Let me let me do this. Amen. Amen. Let me do this. Let me do this real quick here. But I also want to want you to know that on on our website. Um, the podcast is there. Amen. The podcast is there. I want you to sign up for our sign up for our newsletter because we got a newsletter that we're going to start having to come out. Um, I'm sure my wife is here for me to do the header, at, and I did not forget it is on my list to do. But there's a list. There's there's a link right there um, to our website. Amen. Um, and he just added a calendar, so ignore the calendar. Because I haven't updated. He just did it. He just did the calendar. I'm like, we don't have a ministry calendar. Got to put it on there. People know what we're doing. Okay. So share this note to you. Share this note. This is going to be good. Talk about who is our spiritual father. So yesterday we, we talked about all the wrong questions. Talk about all the wrong questions, right? So I want to get back to the questions that we should be seeking God for. And to me, we shouldn't even, um, a brother asked me last night, he texted me last night because he asked me to pray because um, him and his wife, they need to transition from where they're at. They just got married 
and he is he went to be with her church and things he's, he's not getting fed he's still hungry okay praise be to god they're on one accord and she's like will you find us a place actually i need to get him this information <laughs> remember i'm gonna send it to him so in a situation like this this is perfect for what we're talking about it's perfect what we're talking about so i just want to rehash who is my spiritual father and these are questions that we should be petitioning god who is my spiritual father what pastor or leader is god knitted my heart to who is my spiritual mentor what man of god am i assigned to it could be a woman of god or god's leading you that way so let's not be gender specific here um who is my elijah okay who am i supposed to learn from who where where am i going to get my double portion from mm. Mm. who's going to pass down the mantle that's on them onto me who is my elijah those of us that are in leadership those of you who are in leadership who is your elijah who is the one that is that that you are knitted with that you're yoked with that you're training and you're pouring into them who is your elijah's um place yourself as timothy who am i a timothy to okay all these all these questions are all interchangeable here who am i a timothy to who is my paul who who's going to take me up and, and 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 birth me into birth me through christ or the word says in the king james but gotten me through christ matter of fact put it this way he's Who's the one that say say you're say you haven't been saved, and by them ministering the word of God to you, you gave your life to the Lord. They begotten you through Christ. That's the best way I can break it down for you. So now they're discipling you, and now you're you're hey, hey, I'm going here. You want to go? I'm going over here. Do you want to go? You know, some terminology is who's your protege when you talk about in business terms, who's your protege? Who's the next one that's coming up? Who's the next one that's coming up in the ministry? Hey, PT, who's the next one that's coming up? OK, what spiritual father am I to serve and sow my life into? Like I had some questions this morning to my spiritual father, so I text him. Because I want him to marinate on it, and I, I want his I want his opinion. There's some things that you know I got some information on it, but it's still kind of like unsettling with. Me. I you know I reached out to some of my little prophetic, my prophet Nathan, you know some some prophetic people. So I need you to be in prayer with me, okay? Um, just be in prayer. All right. So which pastor is it? Is it the will of God for me to sit under? That is very key. All these questions should be petitioned to God. One of the worst things that the church continuously do. Where in the Bible did they vote for a pastor? Uh -oh. Where in the word of God uh -oh. did they take a vote? Oh. Exactly. Boo. Where? Where? Come on, y'all. Vote. Let me tell you this. True story. A buddy of mine in Detroit. He went on. He went on probably 16. That's the number I'm hearing. About 16 pastoral interviews to be pastor of these churches in Detroit. One particular one, they were torn between three, him and two other people. They had set up in the church foyer. You would not believe what I'm about to tell you. Voting booths. There's a word I want to use right now. It's not a cuss word. These fools. <laughs> 
can I can I just say it? Not praying, not seeking God. They had voters' booths in the foyer, and they voted for who they wanted. We have pastoral committees. We're going to form a committee together. And then they're going to go and, and what they do is they go and they go to all these different churches, listen to all these different pastors and all this other stuff. You're stunned. Oh, no, this is true. Oh, this is so. I told, I've been around. <laughs> I've been around. I saw some things. He's finally pastoring the church now. And I, matter of fact, it was when I was home. So he's probably in his, it was like 2017. So it's a good two years now it's pastoring. <sighs> to whom am I to yoke with? With whom am I aligned by God in the kingdom? Okay. Who am I to be a son to? Who am I to be a daughter to? Once again, where is my spiritual father? Where is he? Where is he? So once again, these are the kind of questions that take us out of the church realm of business as usual. Okay. If what I'm voting, if what I'm voting, suggestion, whatever, whatever the case, if it's not fully led by the Holy Spirit, which is it? right. So, and it's amazing how us that sit in the congregation all of a sudden have these degrees of how to detect a good preacher. We have these preaching degrees, preaching critic, de preaching critic degrees is what I call them, of who's a good preacher and who's not a good preacher. Who gives us the right? All that is personal choice and personal preference. I like Bishop Noah Jones. And I know he's he, his words are like, you need a dictionary or the SARS while he's teaching. But I like, I, I, I like how he teaches the word of God and how he's very rich with the word of God. Everybody else don't like Bishop Noah Jones. And that's fine. These are personal preferences. Okay, based on really, if you're a teacher, you like listening to teachers, but we but we should test the preacher's word against the words of the Bible. Right. Exactly. 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 Again. But father, who who do. See, when, when we're talking about voting, when we're talking about exam, we're what we're really doing. And, and I, I'm. I'm I'll say for the majority of the people that's there, we're looking more as far as personal favor, personal attraction, not so much the word. Some of them are looking to, okay, I'm married, are they single, they have kids, and of course they're going to ask you, hmm. if you are apostolic minister type preacher, A Baptist church or anybody who does not believe in in flowing in the gifts of the spirit, they don't believe in, in speaking in tongues and prophesying and apostles and prophets, you 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 they're not gonna call you anyway <laughs> because of their beliefs. There you go. Like marrying somebody because they're cute, but you have not. You have not prayed for God's will. You only last for so long. There is a there is some type of brain behind the cuteness, and prayerfully, there's <laughs> prayerfully there's some substance, whether man or female. Prayerfully, glory be to God. There's some substance. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that there's some inter, in, intellectual um, holding power, stimulating power. You know, unless you're not, if you unless you're not intellectual yourself, and you're more physical and dealing with attraction and things like that, then it don't matter if they're airhead because you you're probably airhead too. So it don't matter. <laughs> you you're both two handsome and lovely, beautiful people who care about the outward appearance of you and don't matter about the substance. Acts chapter 1, 26. And they cast lots because it came down to two. Come on, Joshua. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I didn't want to read all that out loud because we hopefully you can see it. Let me tap into the people die of lack of knowledge. You, you, know, you know why we die? Like, I'm at the library right now. One, I like getting out, out from my home because it gets too comfortable. And then you can get lazy, get sleepy, get hungry. And then we're done. So, the library has full of knowledge. There are books upon books, CDs, all types of stuff. We ride by knowledge every day. But I want you to I want you to focus on the other half of that scripture too. But the reason why we die of a lack of knowledge, there's a colon after the word knowledge, if I'm correct in the King James. It's because they rejected knowledge. When we ride by a library, when we don't use our public libraries, we reject knowledge. Anytime there's information there for us to gain and we don't use it, we reject knowledge. And so we die from a lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. That's why we dive in lack of knowledge. And so we always we always put that first part there. But anything after a colon explains the first part of what was said. It's because we because they rejected knowledge. So it's like it's like going to hear a sermon, but you reject it. And what you rejected was good for you to live, but you didn't want it. And by you not listening to what was really meant for you, you end up and die for a lack of knowledge. All right. But we don't want, but we don't want to take accountable accountability. We do have to exactly we have to do our part. We have to do our part. But we're lazy, Joshua. We are lazy in the United States. We are the most laziest Christians because we have access to everything. We should be overflowing not just in knowledge, but in application and in fruit. We are unfortunate. We are a fruitless. Mm, mm, Y'all taking me somewhere? We are a fruitless. We're fruitless. We got titles and no fruit. We have, we have, we have, let me, uh, let me scratch time. We have gifts. We have gifts because that's what they are, the gifts. We have gifts which have a name, which is called a title. Okay. But we're not functioning in it. We're, we're lazy. We just, we, we just, we're, we're so interested in being, being applauded, being appreciated and all those things. When Jesus wasn't even appreciated. So if you're looking for man to appreciate you, you're looking for a woman to appreciate you. All I hear is pride. All I hear is pride. 
when you get the compliments, man, I appreciate you, woman, woman of God, I appreciate you. You take that nugget, you take that kudo, you stick it in your pocket and you save it for a rainy day when nobody ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> when you feeling low and when you feeling down and you like, man, my, the work I'm doing is, is not, it's not, pretty. no, you plant, you water. That's what we're supposed to do. Some of us plant, some of us water. God as the increase. We just have to do what he's telling us to do. We got to be the feet, the hands, and the mouth. The latter rain will come. The fruit will produce. And you'll get your reward when it's time. See, the problem is we're looking for our, for our rewards right here on earth. And this earth is going to pass away. No. Why am I looking for man to give me an applause? And I know we're in our natural flesh. And I know I'm not, I'm not trying to be desensitive here. But we have to know that what I'm doing, I'm doing for God. I don't care if people like me or not. There's some relationships that I that I I, would, I was yearning to have with people, but God said, "No, not so." Sometimes those things hurt because in your eyes, you see, "Oh my God, I can learn so much from them. I can learn so much from this person." But God says, "No, no." When so when those things do not do not come about, do not be upset. Do not be saddened. Don't have no art against nobody. Just understand it is the will of God. Understand that it's the will of God. It's the will. Of, thank God he thank God he broke up relationships. And I'm not just talking about male female relationships, but just relationships in your walk because they're one, they're not going to be producive to where God is taking you. So even when we come in contact with one another, Father, what is your will? What is your purpose of us linking up together? That's why we go back to all these the who, what, when, the who, the who, and the what, really. And with whom am I supposed to be connected to? All right, now watch this. Let me go to my note here. This is gonna help you guys. This this blessed me this morning. And this goes, this is this is from First Corinthians, um, verse chapter four, verse 15. I didn't bring my amplified Bible today, so let me go to let me go to my amplified app. My app, my Bible app here, so I can do that. Okay. We have 10,000 strokes. You have a lot of people trying, trying to give us instructions, right? A whole lot of people try to give us instructions. He says, after all, though you have 10,000 teachers, guides to direct you. In Christ, we do. You go on YouTube, you know, we go on Facebook Live, we go, I was just on Instagram, so I, I would be looked at as another instructor if, if I wasn't your pastor, spiritual father, what happened? Another instructor, another teacher. Guys, to direct you in Christ, okay? Yet you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the glad tidings of the gospel. By me pouring into you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you're listening and we're forming that relationship. I became your father through Christ. Your spiritual father here on earth. My life verses is um, Luke 17, 10. I am unprofitable servant. I only do doing my reasonable service. He said, does the master say to the servant? Thank you. I think, think not. Bro, God doesn't baby us. <laughs> If you're called to serve people. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. This is going to help you. Here's, 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 a, here's my little comment. Though you have many who offer their services as your instructors, you have only one by whom you were converted and who has a parental feeling for you. I like that. A parental Feeling for you. We're talking about spiritual fathers. We're talking about spiritual mothers, things of that nature. One where one who has one who, who takes you in as if they're like 
as if you as if you're their natural son or daughter and you want the best of them so you're pouring out you're giving you're sacrificing right I have a spiritual son. His name is Chamaris. He's in high school and he's dating my daughter. <laughs> and I know he does a lot of driving back and forth and whatever she wants and all these other things and whatever. And I needed him to go with me to the storage unit. Okay. Son, do you got gas? And I know he has a little part-time job, but you know, he needs a little money. So I put gas in the sink. Those are just simple little things. What you want to eat? This is what I want. Go give me something to eat. Okay? Simple things. But we pour into them. And then we had some, we had some man talk time. And hey, what's going on with you? You know? He calls me pops. Then when I need to get father fatherly with him, I get I get father fatherly with him. Dealing with a lot, been through a lot, but I, I, I'm not, I'm, you're supposed to be a man and I'm grooming you. But when there's been no man in his life, so you have to deal with a whole lot of stuff, you know, and, and, and speak life. I have to speak life into, into him and heal the, heal the wounds and allow the Holy Spirit to do all this. Trust me. Spiritual fathers, poor, they don't take. Mm, I like that. Spiritual fathers poor, they don't take. Okay? They poor, they don't take. Okay. So, let's look at this. Kind of talked about this yesterday. My natural destiny is directly tied do who my natural father is. Okay. Um, my father's still alive. And my natural destiny, unfortunately, kind of follows some of the paths of my natural father. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God for deliverance. Hallelujah. Okay. So. When I came into this world, I was determined by that, by, by my natural father. Remember, we talked about this yesterday, but not by me. So we had no say-so in the families we were born into. We had no say-so as far as our parents. We had no say-so about none of that. God used our parents and brought them together to manifest us in the earth. He had to use two, two people Bring them together. They had sex. We were born. And here we are. So thank God for them. If not for anything else, they didn't abort you. Mm. We don't think about it that way. Thank them that they carried out and they, and they did not mess up the plans of God for your life. Okay? Aborting you and actually just sending you back to heaven. My God. So we, we may not we may not be pleased with our parents and, and we may and, 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 and don't be mad at your parents because they didn't do what you think they should have did for you so that you could have become a better person. Because they only did the best that they could do. I'm telling you, I just went through this. I'm 55. And we got to stop blaming them. I'm mad at you because you didn't do this when I was 18 and you didn't do this when I was seven. They, if, they'd have, if they'd have known better, they'd have done better. Okay? And as you mature in Christ and, and, and when you have, when you have, when God has graced you with more spiritual maturity, more spiritual insight and knowledge and wisdom and understanding, you'll see quite well Thank you, Father. They did the best they could do. And you and you will be at peace with that. You'll be at peace with that. My mother was sharing. I was my mother and I were talking on the phone the other day. 
and she's telling me how her pastor, the, the first lady there, has stomach cancer again. And she, he said, she said she's like a size one. Do you know how tiny a size one is? Instantly, what rose up in my spirit was to pray the spirit of infirmity, bind the spirit of infirmity off her life. So I'm saying, well, mama, you need to tell Pastor Martin, I ain't afraid to say his name, tell Pastor Martin that um, to give me a call because I have this prayer that he can pray or I can pray through the mom. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I, I don't know. So now she's getting all, all bap, Baptist on me. Okay. <laughs> she's getting all Baptist on me. She don't know. So I said, this, so I, I just dropped the subject. So I went in the email because I had his email. And I'm giving him instructions. This, this is, I've seen it work. So I'm not going to tell you something I did not see manifest. But that you bind the spirit of infirmity. Where PT at? She said the same thing. She, she had a testimony about it. You bind the spirit of infirmity, heart attacks, chronic illnesses, diabetes, anything that's, that's constantly reoccurring. You bind it, but you lose life. Because you bind something, you got to lose something. You lose life and you lose the gifts of healing and wholeness over them. In the name of Jesus. Those were the instructions that I gave. I haven't heard back from them. I don't know. When I go home next month to Detroit, I'll find out. I'll find out. But that's what we got to do. Okay. So who? So when we're so when we're asking God, who's my spiritual father? Who, Father? Who do you want me to connect with? Who's going to pour into my life? Who is going to treat me like like their own son or daughter through Christ? Through that is, let me let me let me try. You guys get this here. I'm putting it quote in quotes. Through Christ, through Christ, not flesh. No flesh allowed. No flesh allowed. I was talking to one of my daughters on the phone before I got on here. And I was asking her, where are you at with her homework for our, our minister's institute? Because I'm about to give out certificates this weekend. Where are you at? She was honest, and I knew, I already knew, Holy Spirit already told me. So I already knew where she was at. She didn't get far at all. But see, I had to talk to her about her priorities. I had to talk to her, like, from, 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 from zero to ten, ten being the highest, where do you place God? Where is God at in your life? And of course, you know, it reminded me like a, a parent and a child. Am I going to get in trouble? <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble telling you the truth or whatever? No, I just want to know. She said a five. Now we know the Bible says in Exodus that God is a jealous God. It's a part, it's one of his names. He's a jealous God. He also said we're not supposed to have any idols above him. So if God is a five, what other things do you have more of a priority and he's only halfway in halfway a priority? So that's why you have not been getting the reading done. That's why, and that's why I've tried to tell you because of your busy life and you have kids. That's why it's easier to listen to the video and not, not watch the video, but listen to the video because my because when I'm teaching, I'm teaching at least more than one chapter or two chapters then you'll still be able to drive and listen to what's being taught. Instead, you're trying to read and you're exhausted and you're tired. Or, see, this is fatherly stuff. I'm trying to help my daughter so she can see where she's at and how she can become better. Or you tell your boys, I need you to watch the baby for an hour so I can go focus and study on this reading. It's about prioritizing what's What's most important to you? And so spiritual parents will help you see that. Help you come to the answer. Help you come to the realization. And not so. Spiritual parents are not supposed to tell you what to do. I can make recommendations. Um. 
there could be some things that I'm discerning. So I'll share with you. But it's still between you and God if you take the advice. And if you don't take it, doesn't mean I'm going to just doesn't doesn't mean that I'm going to cut you off or I'm going to say, oh, you're so rebellious. And all. No, 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 no. It's supposed to reason together. I'm supposed to be available for you when you need me. I don't need you coming to cut my grass. I don't need you coming to shovel my snow. I don't, no, I'm your spiritual father and I am here when you need me. When the Holy Spirit brings you up to my remembrance, when the Holy Spirit is dealing with me about something that's going on with you, pick up the phone and we talk. We have conversations. We build relationships. I speak life in, I speak life into you. I'll share the warnings that I sense. That's what spiritual fathers and mothers are supposed to be doing. Have a genuine concern so that even if you're in a need, if I have it, I'm going to give it to you. Like a natural son. I got two sons. Three daughters, five grandbabies, and sons and daughters in the spirit. So we're talking, okay? Talking about sons and daughters. Those that are nourishing you with, with meat, hmm. those who are not those who are not jealous of your giftings, of your anointings. Those that are godly proud when they can attend something where you're the main speaker or something you have to do. Or they're witnessing you flow in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you, and you just like, it's, it's like being in the natural, like being a proud father. Watching, watching my son play football and making tackles or something like that, or watching my oldest daughter sing a solo or something. Those things make you proud. Same thing in the spirit. Same thing in the spirit. I had a daughter yesterday, and uh, she gave her testimony, right? In one of our pages, she gave her testimony about waiting on God and listening to her. For the first time, I've heard this. I heard this. This this roar of a lion. I heard this boldness um, out of her, and it was it was a consistent boldness. I want to say that it was a consistent boldness. So it wasn't like one of those she got she got real bold for a second and died back down. No, this thing was consistent, and my heart was filled with joy because I saw something bust through her, and I just like keep the lion roaring. Maintain that position right there. Because sometimes people underestimate us when we're quiet and when we're, when, when, when we're reserved. And a lot of times people think they'll think less of us as even if we don't even have enough godly knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So a lot of times, oh, shit on the post. oh I'm about to mess y'all up now. A lot of times we're, we look over those because we're so we're so drawn to those who are more outwardly expressive. Not realizing you got a couple of diamonds and gems over here that are more reserved, but when they speak, they speak with such revelation. They speak with such profoundness. They speak with substance. They speak with spiritual substance. They speak with things you have not found in a book. They speak from a from from a from a from a from a from a, from a position that they've been in and they've been with God, and God has given them some some fresh revelation that neither one of us have ever heard before. But we have this problem of looking over them. We look over them because they may not have that that outward flair. We put it that way that outward flair. I'm comfortable behind a mic. I'm comfortable in front of TV. I've just been groomed that way. But there's no way that I would dismiss somebody because they're quiet and they tell me. I know there's something inside of them. 
a lot of times they just haven't had the opportunity. A lot of you have not had the opportunity to really come forth and release what God has inside of you. And it's not like you're trying to rush to be in front of the in front of the lights and in front of the camera and the and microphone, and all this other stuff. You just constantly spend the time with God. It ain't even about it. It's not even about, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to be my turn. It's not even about that either. You just, you just, you're constantly studying to show thyself approved. You're constantly spending your time in prayer, and prayer is giving you, giving you this revelation. I can have an outline of things that I that I that I'm that I'm going to prepare for, but a lot of times the Holy Spirit is just adding stuff as I'm talking. In our Kingdom Ministers Institute, it's books that we read, but as we're reading the books, God, Holy Spirit, be dropping stuff. So we're just adding to the person's book. Okay. I, I've learned and come to understand that I don't have to rewrite everything on every subject. God has given us other brothers and sisters and who have experiences in certain things that God has God has made available to advance the kingdom of God. Knowledge. We die for a lack of knowledge because we don't we don't want to we don't. Why are we so cheap once we get saved? Why are we so cheap when we get saved? We want a discount here. We want this here. We want, but we, when we was in the world, shoot, we couldn't wait till we got paid. New outfit, designer name on our butt, drinking top shelf. We went all out when we was in the world. We come to God. We lying on the taxes. So we get more money. We adding other people's babies on our taxes. We're trying to find the best, the best tax person who can maneuver and shift some things around. We want a discount. We want coupons. You ain't touched the coupon we use in the world. We could have got now we want a coupon, but we blessed. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's warfare time. Every time ain't warfare. Stop picking fights with the devil and the devil ain't doing nothing. Only time we should go into war is when God says, I need you to go into warfare. And you know what our warfare is? Our warfare is our praise. Our warfare is in our shout. Our warfare is in our clap. Our warfare is in our dance. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. How can we get God to come off his throne? <laughs> Sharon, you crazy. Apostle, you gut punching. <laughs> How? How can we get God to arise? I know I kind of veered off a little bit. I'm going to bring it all back. I'm going to bring it all back. by praising him our father our daddy our papa whatever way you want to however way you address him in your personal relationship with god he likes to be bragged on he likes to be boasted he likes to be exalted and he begins to hear your he begins to hear your cry, the meditations of your heart. He begins, he begins he begins to hear the words that come out of your mouth. And he'd be like, oh, that's that's my daughter. Oh, let me let me let me go talk to her. She done got my attention. Why? Because he smells the oh, he smells the fragrance coming off her altar. The coming off the altar of her heart. He smells the fragrance, fellas, that's coming off your heart. Stop being so macho. Stop being so prideful. Release those tears. 
there was a time people were like Pastor Andre, he didn't. He don't have no tear ducts. They all dried up. His, his tear ducts dry. This man don't cry for nothing. I cry at a drop of a hat now. <laughs> See, when God brings you through some stuff and you just take your mind over the things that he brought you through, oh, those, those tears will start, they'll, <laughs> they'll start, they'll start forming up. Like a flood, the next minute you your eyes start to get real watery, and then you you really go into a heart of thanksgiving. You really start to appreciate the Lord thy God and the stuff He's done for you. How did I get there? I don't even know. Hallelujah. Your spiritual father should be able to speak life, speak life into you. Breathe. Oh, I like this word. Breathe on your destiny that God has for you. He should be able, she should be able to breathe on it so that even, even when you can't breathe, he's interceding and breathing for you. Ooh, that was good right there. That was good right there. He's not going to let you faint. He's not going to let you, he's not going to let you perish. But you have to do your part. You have to do your part and you have to communicate with him. Because there's only so much he's going to be able to see or she's going to be able to see in the spirit realm concerning you. But you also have to, just like in 1 Peter, and, and, and it says that cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Cast your anxieties, cast your concerns, cast your worries. Your spiritual father and your mother should be the same way. Son, why don't you talk to me? Son, bring that stuff to me. And know that whatever you're going through, that they're not going to judge you. I don't care if everybody dropped off and they don't, if they didn't like it. It's a safe place. It is a lot of ministries are not a safe place. Kingdom Ritman is a safe place. There will not be no gossip. <laughs> There's, there's, there's not gonna be no, but no, not, not, not on my watch. Mm -mm. It's a safe place because understanding that we all have been somewhere at some place of time where we can identify with somebody else. I'm the gatekeeper. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. For, for the souls that God has led to me, led to Kingdom Renovators, sons and daughters outside of those that's in South Carolina who have led them to, I do not take that lightly because I there's a day that I'm going to have to stand before God in regards to the souls that have been brought before my presence. <laughs> Look at PT. <laughs> Bless you, woman of God. Safe place. I don't care where you've been, because I've been some places too that I did not like. If I look at them now, if I go back to some, I'm very disgusted. But I also know that during those times, during those times, God, God had a wealth of kindness towards me. He had a wealth of long suffering towards me. He had a wealth of patience towards me until the day I came to full repentance. As spiritual fathers and mothers, it should be the same way. Same way. And like I said yesterday, my spiritual father, Pastor Jim, he also prayed. I know the Lord told me to ask him to be my spiritual father. And I've never... I don't think I've ever asked that before. Some, thing, some things you just assume or some things what well, he's my mentor or whatever else. This was the first time ever even coming to the knowledge of all this, the Holy Spirit said, ask him to be your spiritual father. The first time I met him, we, we was at this, this event called A Glow, Women's A Glow. And I was getting ready to leave and the Holy Spirit said, no, you need to connect with him before you go. And when we connected, it was like we knew each other. 
So I knew it was God. And he's a short little white man <laughs> with wisdom out of this world. And I knew it was a connection. I knew. He watches and he listens and he teaches me and he, I glean from him. I even talk like him sometimes. <laughs> it's just, it runs, it runs. It's just like you say things that, that, man, my mother says that. Man, my daddy said this. Same thing. Mirroring. We're supposed to mirror Christ, right? We're supposed to be followers of God. We're supposed to imitate God. So those same characteristics, Old Testament jokes, <laughs> those same characteristics should be flowing. They should be warning you as because of the things that I've been through as a man and, and the sons that come to me, I can really tell you about your flesh and dealing with your body and, and women and things like that because I've been through it. I'm not going to pat you on the back because you out here, you, if you're still out here dipping and you, sh you ain't supposed to be dipping. We're we going to have, we have conversations. We're going to talk. Same with my daughter. So it's not just men. Okay, and I ain't gonna say it's easy, especially if you done if you done been out there, you done experience. I ain't gonna say it's easy to keep it under wraps, but we have to learn to manage it. We have to learn to be God centered, and the more we God centered, the more the more we're focusing on God and His way, and not worrying about trying not to sin. It's, it's that's when we sin the most when we trying not to sin, because our mind is constantly there on oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, no. But if you focus on doing his will, if you focus on his word, if you meditate on his word day and night, you'll find yourself having more victories and with less effort. There will always be regular growth when you're connected to your spiritual father. Yes, absolutely. 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 Let me get to the point that I did not get to yesterday. All right. All right. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to buckle up here? Okay. I covered this last part yesterday. If you're not serving and sowing into a man of God whom you feel in your heart is a divine gift from God, you are stifling your own spiritual growth. You are also stagnating the spiritual growth of those around you too, your family and your friends. I sow upward. Okay, what I mean is I don't sow into kingdom renovators. I sow upward. I sow into my spiritual father. Okay. Now I give, I give an offering to kingdom renovators, but I sow. Okay, whatever the Lord tells me this, I ask the Lord. Now I'm about to, as, as Pastor Jim said, I'm about to flip over the apple cart. I ask God what to give thank you yes it does the question is are you going to take the way <laughs> are you going to take the way are you real enough with yourself and what i mean is you know yourself on what you can do and what you can't do where you can go and where you cannot go you know you if you're not your are <laughs> you're a bigger fool than i thought and I, I, I can't apologize. You know you. You don't lie to yourself. You know you. You know you know your sense, your appetites. Mm. You know what make you say, mm. Mm. you know all those things about you. You know where you should not be alone with people. You know who you should not be hanging around with. Even, even your Christian friends. You know that fight is real. Let, let me paint a picture for you. Okay. And we've seen this in the movies where two people are highly attracted to one another, right? And you see the fight of the urges to not go forth. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. It's all Holy Ghost. This is not scripted. <laughs> all right. And you see, and you know you're attracted, you're strongly attracted with each other and everything else, right? And you can see the look in your eyes. And you know the door is right there. 
and you know you need to hurry and get out the door. You need to do it, Joseph. <laughs> run. And I ain't talking about forest. I'm talking about run, Joseph, run. But when you're on the other side of the door, and we've seen this in the movies, the individual is resting up against the wall. Because the desire is to really be inside the door. But you know that it was best to be outside the door. That fight within our members is a real war. It's a real war. That's where obedience kicks in. Are you going to obey God? Or your flesh? Yeah. That's real. <laughs> it is a real war, let me tell you. <laughs> Jesus. It is a real war. And so, as much as it would be nice to do this, and when I mean nice, I mean feel good to do this, or pleasurable to do this, or that. When all that is done, when all that is done, that, 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 that temporal moment, okay, but when all that is done, you still have to see God. You still have to see God. I'm talking to believers now, okay? I'm talking to believers. So even, even if if for that moment you 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 have rebelled for this temporal pleasure, these temporal desires, and you took you took advantage of the opportunities that was there. You didn't take the way of escape, but you went ahead. You, you still got to face God. God's still right there while you're doing what you're doing. You gonna beat yourself up? Are you gonna knock the dust off your feet? You gonna repent? You gonna turn? Are you gonna learn that I can't be in this situation because I, I'm not good here? I am totally weak. And my flesh took over. Our flesh took over. Two people with the same familiar spirits. Whoo. And you know that what can happen is going to cause you to be in a bad place with God. Run. Run. Just run. Without the feeling of the Holy Ghost, the overcoming power of the greater one who is greater than he who is in the world, it's an impossible task. The book of Acts is beautiful. You're right. You're right. It's gonna it, it's gonna take every bit. It's gonna take every bit of the Holy Ghost, but you have to allow the Holy Ghost to take over. He's a gentleman. He ain't gonna force himself. He is not gonna force himself on us, but he will make a way. I remember time. This is this Holy Spirit told me to share this. I remember time. I was in, I was living in Michigan, and I was going to go meet up with someone, and I knew exactly what I was going to do. Y'all know exactly what I'm saying. And I rode past the church sign, you know, the marquee, and it said, "The wages of sin is death." How much more of a warning do you need when you know you're going to do something in the dark? And you know what Andre did. That was his time. That was his opportunity to turn around and go back home. Andre did not turn around and go back home. Andre still went to go do what he was going to do.
flashing lights right there, nice marquee, bright lights, all the light bulbs working in the marquee. The wages of sin is death. Very true. Romans 3 and 23, I believe. Yeah. I do. It's still going. See, your flesh is not saved. Your flesh don't care. Your flesh wants when it wants, when it wants it, how it wants it, whenever it wants it. Your flesh is your enemy. Period, point blank. That war is within the end in me, the end in me, enemy, the end in me. All right. All right. All right. You guys hanging in there real good today? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. Okay, let's go to this. You cannot see yourself as a spiritual son to someone. You need to find your, think of Joseph the dreamer and his gray escape. Look at, look at King David, who was where he was not to, exactly. He was a king. He's supposed to be on the battlefield. He wasn't supposed, but you, you, know, you know what I think about that scenario right there? It wasn't strange. It wasn't by coincidence that best he was up there. I believe he knew. Because his 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 dude, um, God, what was what's Bathsheba's husband's name? Ah. But he was a top ranking official. So David was David knew. He knew of them. Uriah, thank you. David knew Uriah. It wasn't, <laughs> I don't think that was strange. You know, men conversate, men talk, talk about what goes home and home and whatever else. I'm sure he probably seen her somewhere. I'm sure that wasn't the first time he met Bathsheba. In well, maybe in that kind of way, but I'm sure in just fellowship, he knew that was your wife's wife. Men are sneaky just like women are. Men are crafty. Men are crafty. We got to know to run. Got to know to run. If you are a preacher or a pastor and you don't really have anyone whom you can call your spiritual father, you two are out of apostolic alignment and you need to pray and take steps to allow God to connect you. If you have offended a spiritual father or a spiritual or a spiritual father has offended you, Go honor him at any cost to your pride and ask forgiveness. Get the air clear now. Do it quick. Don't delay. Don't hesitate. Allow honor. Uh, always honor a spiritual father. If you want things to go well for you and you wish to live long on earth, go quickly and at least restore the honor of the former relationship. To me, I'm going to sum it up like this. Matthew 5, 21 through 23. If you got to, before you bring your gifts to the altar, if you got to art against anyone, God says, go make peace. Be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. Then, in your attempt, now in your attempt, if they don't want to be, they don't want to make peace, then God sees that you've made peace. You did everything you can to make peace. There ain't nothing else you can do. So, the way the writer has it here, I don't, I don't completely agree. Okay, I don't completely agree to that because that's almost saying that that's almost saying like your spiritual father has dominion over your life, you know. And now, now, see, now I'm thinking about witchcraft, and I'm thinking about manipulation and control. Okay. And so that that's why I don't fully agree. But we're not supposed to be we're not supposed to allow anything to fester either. OK, so we're supposed to make sure that because the longer we allow disagreements to occur or, or anger to arise, that we're opening up the door for the enemy to come in. And a lot of times because in our human nature, 
when we're upset against, uh, when we're upset with someone or we're angry about someone, we don't keep it to ourselves. We tell other people. And that thing can even fester even more. Now you got a wildfire going on. Man, being a former whoremonger, I was crafty, manipulating. I was, man, so I, I grieve men, me extremely crafty, but I thank God with, he made me a new creator. Man, John, we got to talk, man. I, I, I knew we connected. Because, yeah, you know, how, you know how Paul said he was the chief? Yeah, I was Yeah, I was a chief whoremonger too, man, let me tell you. Yeah, Jesus. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the blood. Mm, Jesus. And deliverance. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. What do we got? Okay. So we have to admit that we are seeing a whole lot of spiritual abortions in the kingdom of God today. Churches that come and go, stars that shoot across the Christian media sky of popularity, but they quickly fame out. Ministries that try to duplicate what someone else is doing. People that start things only to never finish them and a whole lot of fluff, a lot of shaky things, a lot of flaky things. Even with a church. Okay, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to read this is what he said. This is what the writer says. Even with a church that he recently pastored, if all the people had that had ever attended for a month or more were still there, um, they would have had a church of 1,000 or more. And he says, I'm not talking about just visitors here, but those who came and stayed for a season. The body of Christ is in a state of disarray because there are no spiritual fathers. And because when there's and, and because when they are, sons are betraying or dishonoring their spiritual fathers or disconnecting from them altogether. But you cannot successfully disconnect from a spiritual father any more than you can su successfully disconnect from your natural father. All honoring of a father is penalized. God's word says so. I'm a. I'm gonna say this, okay. Um, about five years ago, I was asked by two different ministries, and this is what they said: the Lord said that we've been praying, and the Lord said that you are our apostle. And I said, okay, okay. Let me let me ponder on that and we'll let me, let's get back together. So everything's fine. So what they're saying is that they're saying that I'm their spiritual father. So everything is fine, right? There was we all all three ministries combined and we did a revival in my hometown. And the couple were one of them I went to school with. We grew up in the same neighborhood. There was Something happened one particular night at the at the revival, and there was a little falling out of what happened. So I'm talking to both of them on the phone, giving them instructions, fatherly instructions on how to handle this. Okay. So my instructions, I can remember now. Don't talk about this. Let's pray about it. We'll come back together in about five days. Let's let's let our emotions calm down, and then we'll come back together and fix this thing right. Next minute, the one young man, he goes and he grabs somebody else and gets him, gets him involved. The couple, and all of a sudden, I'm no longer their spiritual father. But they both just said, God said it. So God changed his mind within a month? God. So even on the opposite end, as a leader, people will say, well, God said, God said, or whatever. And because I have an open heart. And I'm, a, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one to say, you know, if you, and when people say, well, God said this, well, God told me this, well, who am I to say that God said differently? If you, if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. I can't, you know, I can't, oh, now I may say something differently or whatever else, but I'm not going to debate about what the Lord told you. So that happened one time. Then recently, very recently. And I knew, me and this individual, we knew that God was hooking us up together in ministry. Father, son, I mean, father, daughter. Spiritual father, daughter. And then here's what I believe a lack of um, character and, and, and integrity comes into play. Because 
one communication drops off two before you know it you're seeing things on facebook and you have no clue of but you thought that you were their spiritual parent now i'm not saying control okay i'm not saying control i'm not saying manipulation because I, i'm not going to control anybody i'm not i would do my best not to operate anything because if you say god tell you to do something okay i'm gonna pray for you and let's go let us remember our spirits are created or reborn not our bodies or minds that's good we have to renew our minds with the word and present our bodies living sacrifice which is re- yes right ephesians i mean not ephesians romans 12 and 1. and you know when when we do that to me when, when we go there i'm gonna just take off a minute to me that is our best form of worship when we live out of obedience to god i believe that brings the most pleasurable fragrance before god because we are walking according to his ways we are walking according to his will and not our will our reasonable service is to walk up right before him and so in saying what i was saying previously there are many there's I've, I've been through the part where people's like yeah you know god said you're my spiritual and this last one we i was in we was in both total agreement and then all of a sudden it shifted they shifted still no communication still no no still no reason why i don't treat them any different i still love on them when i see them and we have when we have some type of ministry event i still invite because I, I don't hold grudges oh that's that's on them not me so no, not me. Uh, honor is important, though. Honor is important. You want to honor, and it's and, and it's not. And it, sh- it should honor should never should should never be one way. Should never be one way. And just because I function in in the gift of an apostle, and I, I, I function in really all the gifts the Lord has blessed me with. But I, I know I know how to st- I know how to be humble, and I know how to honor other people. And I'm talking about just as my brother and sister in Christ, I honor you. I honor those of you that are listening to me. I honor you. One, you, <laughs> we are equal in God's eyes, and since I want the heart of God, we're equal. We have different functions in the body of Christ. And we need each other to advance his kingdom. I love when Jesus said, I only do the I only do the will of the Father and I only say what he only say what he tells me to say, I only do what he tells me to do. Everything comes from above. And as a spiritual father, I want you to do the things that come from above. I want to be able to help you process things. Right, God is no respect of person. I, I want, I want, I want God, I want to be able to help you process what you things you may not be able to understand. I want you to be able to, I want you to be able to fulfill the very mandate. If there's if, if there's a book in you, I know how I can help you publish your book. And you sell whatever you want to sell. My job, I believe, in my one of my men is to help you become everything God's called you to be. And with technology, we said it's yesterday. You don't have to. We have we have kingdom renovators in Michigan, Illinois. Minnesota, Mississippi, the representative. Let's set something up. We'll come to you. Lord, we got ministry. Let's travel. Let's do this. I know that. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on you, Josh. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. We're going to do this. So let me let me come to the closing. I, oh man, I love you guys so much. A spirit-filled believer cannot grow under a non-spirit-filled leader. 
when I was giving my example about the churches, don't do not expect if you're a tongue talking prophesying believer, do not expect to be asked to pastor a church that don't believe in that. Don't expect to have a spiritual father who does not believe in, in, in what you believe in to help nourish and cultivate that. Now, I believe that if it's the opposite, if you say, well, I don't believe it, I don't speak in tongues, I, I, don't, I don't believe it, I don't understand it, whatever. And a lot of things we say we don't believe is because we don't have an understanding. I've seen two colleagues of mine when I was in theology school on two different occasions and understand this, when, when I mentioned Baptist, I grew up Baptist. And I believe out of any denomination, they have the most solid Christian foundation. I believe they're the most solid. And actually, in their in their practice of how to handle things, paperwork, finance, and things like that, they're, they're, they're pretty sound. They're pretty sound. We're one body of the church of Christ is the head of the body whose members in. That's right. Totally agree. Totally agree. I think the thing that's heartbreaking is that we, we have a problem fellowshipping with one another. Just because of interpretation of difference, we we, we can't. We, we won't. We won't fellowship with one another. I had my dad, a friend of mine, had went to their church, and I had my dad, he texted me. He's like, yeah, your, your friend was at our service today, kind of tall. He's about six foot, you know, light skin, uh, bald head, and uh, he's not Baptist. <laughs> oh, my God, I laughed so hard. Because that's how we identify each other. So when people ask me what denomination, Jesus that's what Jesus, that's what denomination I am, Jesus. Because that's the common denominator that we all have together is Jesus. But we can all worship the same God, can't we? Let everything else fall where it may. Amen. Let everything else fall where it may. So God, he said, the writer says, God would never place a charismatic believer under a non-charismatic father figure. It never ceases to amaze me how thousands of spirit-filled believers decide to attend non-spirit-filled churches and sit under a non-spirit baptized minister who will be gone in a few years or less. But then again, the ministry has not understood the apostolic themselves and the ministry is not aligned with one another properly either. Most ministers don't know who their own spiritual father is, much less how to be one themselves. So how can they expect the pew to get into alignment in the pulpit hasn't aligned themselves first? There has been a dearth in the land of spiritual fathers. Where are the fathers? Where are the apostles? Will the true apostles please step forward? We have accidentally substituted many things for apostolic alignment, denominations, administrative, administrative boards, procedures, rules, just to name a few, but nothing can substitute for for a father-son-daughter relationship, God aligns his kingdom through apostolic relationships, heartfelt connections, and supernatural networking. God's way of growing his kingdom is by creating the father-son relationships that will outlast, outlive, and outwit the devil's schemes. When we get, when we get aligned in these father-son relationships and become passionate about honoring and serving our fathers, our success in the kingdom is inevitable. This is is in time revelation this is last day divine order glory bless you bless you praise god bless you a lot of things that that we do talk about in apostle eckert apostle john eckhart i i have a lot of his books read study um a lot of these things out there they're re-emerging because it's been lost it's been lost Okay, it's, it's, it's just been lost. And so it sounds like a new doctrine and it's not a new doctrine. It's just that there's been no teaching on it. There's been no understanding of it. Um, I was Baptist all, for a good portion of my life up to 20, up to almost in my 30s, I believe. 
And then I went to a church of God in Christ, heard them speaking in tongues, and I didn't run. I just like, what's that? Because <laughs> I didn't know. I said, okay. And I think I thank God. I thank God that that even when I hear stuff that sounds new to me or sounds strange to me, I'll go research it myself. And I'll petition the Holy Spirit about it. Give me the truth about this. Is this true? Is it false? Give me truth. Because we all have a way of spinning something around, you know, to make it fit. But I want to know the truth. And a lot of leaders would not say this. If I err in my teaching, I'd say, hey, you don't even have to say, hey, Apostle, hey, Andre, you, you mentioned this on your podcast. And and can we talk about this? This is what I found. This is what this is. The term. Let's talk. I am not bigger than nobody else. Pastor Jim told me, stay humble. He is. And he keeps saying that because I know what he sees. See, when your leader sees something great on you, he'll tell you to stay humble because he don't want you to get the big head. He don't want you to have men. He don't want you searching for men to applaud you. Stay humble. He said, whenever the Lord is calling you to minister and you come to the front, you allow the anointing of God to use you the way he needs to use you. And you get back in the back of the line. And you wait till you're called again. Humility. He said, don't, don't allow them to keep you up front. Don't allow them to fluff, you know, to fluff you with all these. No, no, just humble yourself. Go right back to the back of the line until your number's called again. Be humble. Be humble. That's when God will exalt you. When you stay low. <laughs> when you stay low, God will exalt you. So I felt this on the way here today. And this is the first time I've ever, ever, ever done this. And if, if you've been wounded in ministry, if you've been hurt, you find yourself pouring out and nobody's pouring back into you. I'll pour into you. You may not like it, but I'll pour. S, 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 O. You see third on there? That's Pastor Tori. And as um, Sharon, she's still on. I'll pour into you. And I'm going to love on you. And so I make, I give you that, I make that out there that I'm here. I'm here. If you're looking or desiring to have a spiritual mentor, spiritual father, pour into you and, and to care and to love on you, and then I'm here. Thank you, Sharon. I am here for you. No tricks, no gimmicks, no games, just Jesus. My former mentor, mentor says that. No gimmicks, no games, just Jesus. That's all I know. That's all I know. I live to be in his will every day. I live to be in his will every day. And so if you want to reach out, you want to send me a message or whatever it is, like, hey, apostle, would you, would you mentor me? Would you pour into me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome to the family. That's what I'll say. Welcome to the family. This thing is bigger than me. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to be used by God. And I want to die empty. I got books. I got more books I have to write. E-books, little things that I have to write. He's already shown me. And I have to get them out there. I'm, I'm pr making it a mandate within the next 30 days. I'm going to have this one. It's called Troubled Minds. Troubled Minds. I'm talking about the deception of the heart, how the heart is deceitful. Troubled. Troubled Minds. People just don't kill. They just don't wake up and say, I'm going to kill somebody. No, that thing's been brewing and stirring in their heart. Troubled minds. Troubled. So, I love you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to pour out into your people. 
Father, I pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, God, that they have gained some form of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding pertaining to you and your word. Father God, things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that, that they operate out of an open heaven. Father God, that they are able to decree and declare and use their, their authority and their dominion here on earth that you have given us through Jesus Christ who lives inside of us, the, the complete deity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And Father God, that we are over every principality. Father God, we have full authority around, we have full authority in the earth. We are your workmanship. We are beautiful and handcraftedly made. God, you, you made no mistakes in us. Father, I command them to arise in you. I command them that they allow you to come forth, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you break the spirit of fear, God, that paralyzes and causes them to be timid in the things that you have already spoke to their bellies. And I speak to your womb right now. Wake up. Wake up in the name of Jesus. You are not crazy about the things that God has been speaking to you in the quiet. It is not absurd. Stop thinking God cannot use me. Yes, he can because he created you. Stop worrying about what people are going to say. Stop worrying about how people are going to respond. Trust God. Trust the still small voice. And you know it's not your voice. You know it's not the voice of the devil because the voice of the devil has us to go against God's word. He's not, the devil doesn't give you things to produce life. He tells us things that's going to produce death like he did with Adam and Eve. So, Father, I thank you for the birth things that's going to come out of their wounds, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that what has been manifested, I mean, I thank you, Father, that, that what you have already predestined in them will soon begin to be birthed in the earth, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they continue, Lord God, to tarry over the, over the plans and the purposes and the vision that they don't lose sight. Father God, I pray, Lord God, you give the wisdom of, of, of who to share. of who to share their dreams and vision with, because there's dream killers out there. There's dream killers that'll speak death to their dreams, death to their visions that they know is so tangible, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that there'll be an increase in their relationship with you that will produce, Father God, a place of holiness Look at it, they've never experienced in you. Look at you said, be holy for I am holy, God. God, the only thing you're saying is that make you our number one priority. What you're saying is this is for our minds to be God conscious and God centered instead of self conscious and self centered. Father God, I want to be more conscious of you today than I was yesterday. I want to be more conscious of you um, last week. Father God, am I, have I grown in my consciousness of being in you? more today than I was last week. Father God, I want you to order my steps according to your plans and not my plans, God. And God, and when, when I feel like you're birthing something in me, I present it before you, Father God, to, to, to be assured that this is your plan. God, God put a hedge around Gomer so that she could not go after the things she loved. Father, I pray right now that you put a hedge around us, Father God, that we don't go after the lust of our flesh, the appetites of our flesh, God. And God, that you'll keep us in a place, God, that is safe and secure in you, God. Spiritual elevate, spiritual ever, spiritual elevation. I decree and declare on everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice. 
spiritual maturity, spiritual elevation, spiritual growth in your word out in the name of Jesus. That's going to produce signs, wonders, and miracles, oh God. That's going to change their continents. It's going to change their presence. It's going to change their talk. It's going to change, it's going to change where, they, where they imitate you more, God. And God, that you're going to increase their hunger and thirst for you, God. And when they feel full, they'll pour out unto others and they're going to come back and say, Father, give me a drink. And you'll pour back into them again, oh God. God, we're not going to hoard your word. We're not going to hoard the revelation, God. God, give us, give us the uh, give us the keen, the keenness and the insight of when to release and when not to release. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of them, all their souls, all their homes. Father God, every doorpost, God, like in the old testament, they applied the blood to the doorposts and the window frames. Anything that has an entrance, oh God. The blood was applied, and I apply the blood to them right now, God, over their families, their children, their grandchildren, God, oh, even over their businesses. Yes, Lord, even over their businesses, God. College students, God, bless them, cover their feet, anoint them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I bless you for all the kingdom renovators. I bless you for the future kingdom renovators. I, th I bless you for future apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teachers. Gifts of administrations, gifts of healing, miracle workers, all the other gifts. I bless you for the future ones that's coming and are immature. Father, God, I thank you for the release of those that's on the backside of the mountain like Moses was, God. God, I thank you that you're bringing them to the forefront. I thank you that you're bringing them to the top of the mountain, God, in the name of Jesus. You told me a long time ago, God, that there's a, there's a new remnant that's coming on the scene that loves you wholeheartedly that does not compromise will not compromise their walk their relationship with you father use me father god i ask for wisdom from you liberally all the time liberally you said you give out wisdom solomon could have asked for anything he wanted to but he asked for wisdom knowledge and understanding and because of that you made him the richest ever but Father God, let us not be where, where, where we don't even apply the same things to our own lives, which Solomon asked for his people. So Father God, let that be applied to us first, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We got to say we can pour it out to your people. So Father, I love you and I bless you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. Tomorrow. Normally I start at 12, but I have a doctor's appointment at 11.50. And my doctor's a half hour away. So I believe what I'm going to do is, oh, one o'clock, two o'clock. Two o'clock tomorrow. I think I can make it at two. I'm going to come on live at two tomorrow, okay? That's the only time adjusted. Two o'clock, two p.m. tomorrow. I'm going to come on um, the Gatekeeper of the Sheep with Apostle Andre podcast tomorrow at two p.m. All right. So God bless you. Um, do you know how to reach me? You guys know how to reach me? Oh, you can reach me just through um, through my podcast website. <laughs> Amen. Love you guys. If you need to call me, if you need to call me, here's my number. Please text me first. Let me know that you're calling so I know who you are. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. I want to release it. There's a word of the Lord. I will release it. Amen. If there's something you want me to pray with you in agreement with, as long as, it's, as long as it is the will of the Lord, I will do so. Amen. Ah. Uh, Any ministry questions? Anything like that? I have two. I have two individuals right now. Two daughters. One is going. One is studying and preparing for her her ordination um, as a teacher. If you notice, when have you ever heard of us? We we exalt all the gifts except the teacher. I'm adorning. I'm. She's an awesome teacher of the Word of God. 
and uh, that's victorious 88 that you see in our comments and I'm gonna do it um, I got I, there's some work that I have her to do that's gonna benefit kingdom innovators all together um, to get her in that teaching mode getting her used to writing out um, assignments and things of that nature and then I have one who is going to be an evangelist she is an evangelist actually it's just the ordination is just a manifestation of what's already there it's just being in agreement of what's already on you and um, so she's an evangelist in training right now and that's just man's formalities but i just got her working on some things and doing some outreach stuff so she can really get groomed she can be some she can be groomed amen get some experience underneath her belt so take care joshua looking forward to calling you renovators bless you bless you.